President Putin uh, is a fascist. Uh, it's a term he bandies about a lot, and, and it has a meaning. Uh, it's just used as a boo word, it's just, I don't like you, just to delegitimize people. It's, it's sort of a swear word in politics, because uh, no reasonable person would want to be uh, suspected of, of fascism. Um, so it's, it's not just whatever you want it to be, just um, um, branding someone that doesn't mean they actually are a fascist. So um, I've read the principles institutions of fascism by, by Benito Mussolini, the one who did more to invent fascism than, than anyone else. And of course, he was a prominent um, socialist in Italy beforehand. And of course, most socialists, socialists are not fascists at all. But as Churchill said about communism and fascism, uh, they are opposite those similar. I mean, really, they're totalitarian. And I talked about totalitarianism um, a few days ago. But uh, so I'm going to go run through a, a um, uh, fascism checklist for Putin and give him a, a score of sort of well, between zero and three. Zero, not remotely fascist. One, slightly. Two, quite a lot. And three, absolutely. So the cult of the personality. Um, give him a two. I wonder if that's even actually high. Because, yeah, he's definitely got the cult of the personality. Um, so he's adulated. Um, his image is almost everywhere. There was a pop song about him, uh, a guy like Putin. Uh, so far as I know, the state wasn't behind that kind of, this girl group come up with that. You'd think for a young, it was an unlikely sex symbol, this um, short, bald guy who was, um, goodness, um, almost 50 when that song came out. Um, and he's, um, but, but he's written this essay, probably written by actually this ultra-nationalist who's historian, who's his court historian, that he published a few months ago, arguing that Ukrainians were a type of Russian. I mean, it's not completely bunker because Kiev was the birthplace of Russia and so on, and yes, they're linguistically related and uh, they're all other Slavonic people. But anyway, that's now compulsory reading for, for um, uh, those uh, training to be military officers, and that's quite a cult of personality thing to do. Um, but uh, insulting him is a crime. I believe that's true of consultants quite often for not taking down critical comments about President Putin fast enough. But why am I giving him a three? There are no statues, um, nothing's been named after him, no city, no university, anything like that. There are far worse cuts of the personality in Turkmenistan, even Azerbaijan, and um, even of, of living leaders sometimes. Uh, another thing is he. Um, because Hitler was exactly the same thing. They want to be reaching Godwin's law. They, even he built motorways. Um, I remember teaching my, my Russian uh, pupils about this and saying, yes, and Hitler became chancellor and president at the same time, even though the idea was to be, was to be done by two separate people. I didn't dare, which gave him enormous, bizarre, his presidential campaign, said he wasn't going to tell people any of his policies. Um, and there was a huge media campaign to exalt him to this messianic figure, the saviour of Russia. Um, was Stepan Bandera a fascist? Um, I think it's fair to say that he was. Um, uh, now, he cooperated with, with the Third Reich for a while, but hey, the Soviet Union cooperated with the Third Reich for a while, for two years. I mean, just because you cooperate with someone in extremist doesn't mean you believe that ideology. I mean, Indian nationalists cooperate with the Third Reich, but Indian nationalism is not Nazi. Do you see what I mean? Um, so in desperate times call for desperate measures. It's a bit like saying Churchill was a communist on the basis that he collaborated with Stalin. So um, the way Putin has abrogated his constitution, the way he, he, he is in massively a breach of every single day. Remember that there is a, um, uh, an article of the constitution which um, uh, specifically prohibits censorship and is a very censorious government these days. So no censorship except you can't criticise the military or you can't rehabilitate fascism or you can't diminish the glory of the army. Or you can't criticise the conduct of this special military operation in Ukraine and you can't even call it a war when it's a war. So when you're bombing and you invade on the ground in an attempt to topple the government and take their territory, uh, what is that called? Not a war, apparently. If that's not a war, I don't know what is. Um, his elections are always charades and public opinion as is, is already was um, scripted. So, I mean, in terms of elections, I think that's um, maybe two out of three. The one thing is he actually does allow other political parties. He's not a member of any party. He's been part of the United Russia Party, which more or less is fan club. Um, in terms of um, breaching his own constitution, again, I suppose two out of three, because he's not actually suspended it. Um, maybe that's even worse. That would have been at least honest to suspend it. Um, just so, so there is no censorship, long live censorship. 
Putin is no saint. Well, I'll look about Zelensky um, sometime. Anyway, uh, the way the courts are completely pliant, I mean, that's almost a three out of three. Their courts are absolutely farcical. You know, trying a dead man, Magnitsky, um, an empty chair in the court, because it, 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 as a defendant in Russia, you're in a cage just to make you look guilty, just to completely prejudice the court against you. Even worse than being handcuffed in a jumpsuit in the United States, it gets worse. That cage, that empty cage was guarded by police in case in case his ghost escaped. It was that. Wow, insane. Um, so how could a dead man answer for himself? And what sentence could you give someone who died several years earlier? And that is the sort of kangaroo court they have. That is the laughable injustice that passes for jurisprudence. I don't know what juridical principles there are for, for charging someone who is deceased. I mean, England did that with, Char sorry, with Cromwell, who was sentenced to death again, because he was already dead. And the sentence of death was carried out on his dead body. But that was 1660. Um, anyway, so Russia is in the 17th century, as it were. Um, so this rubber stamp legislature, I can't think of a single piece of legislation that he wanted passed that wasn't passed. I can't think of a single court case that um, he, which didn't, didn't have the verdict he wanted. Um, in fairness to him, you know, Navalny is still allowed to tweet from prison, which I'm a bit surprised about. Um, obviously, that's another thing from a murder dissidents. I mean, that's, um, again, more or less three out of three. Okay, he could have killed more of them. He hasn't killed Zelensky. Uh, um, uh, sorry, he hasn't, well, tried to kill Zelensky. He hasn't killed Navalny yet. They obviously tried to poison him. So, um, so, uh, let me see. It's, uh, in terms of not being a one-party state, all right, it's two out of three. Um, there are several political parties, but they're all of the same colour. If you significantly disagree with them, you are labelled an extremist. How do we know these parties are extreme? They might be mainstream, actually, because they're not even allowed to express their ideas. People aren't allowed to vote for them. If you really thought they're extreme, we'll let people stand, and we'll see what the what uh, the public wants. They might actually win. So let a thousand schools of thought contend, he doesn't believe. So he's got to decide what's best for people. He obviously doesn't trust the people, think they must be so evil and moronic that they must be allowed to make their own decisions. The way he muzzles the media, well, that's almost two out of three. I mean, I mean, Dodge has gone off air. Uh, there's a 15 year prison sentence for telling the truth. So um, journalism has actually been criminalized. You can only be a propagandist for the regime. Um, because, you know, there are, sometimes even in English language publications, the Moscow Times, there's some pri surprisingly candid criticisms. Um, you know, in terms of rule of law, his, his fascism is, um, well, I wonder if I can have to say two out of three, because they do show a, a slavish devotion to procedure and paperwork. I remember reading 10 Days That Shook the World, and John Reed, that American journalist, says in the 1917 um, revolution, said, yes, there was, a, there was the customary Russian reverence for documents, that at a time when only 30% of people could read. And I recognise that they're always into documents and pages and pages of documents to be to be signed and filed. So um, in terms of slaying lots of people, in terms of fascism, maybe two out of three, it's not been absolutely wholesale slaughter. Yeah, several thousand Chechen civilians killed. I know even humane armies will accidentally kill some civilians, but there was no attempt to reduce casualties. And indeed, some civilians were willfully killed on a, on a fairly large scale, rounding them up, killing them, knowing to be civilians, which I know the Chechen militants did too. Um, so I know he might argue that intra-arma NMC led legates, and I know his opponents could say the same, but, it, but that is a bogus statement because there are laws of war. There's the Hague Convention, to which Russia is a signatory, there's the Geneva Convention, which of course Russia helped to draw up and was drafted in Russian as well, French and English, Russia being one of the authoritative languages for, for it. So they've got absolutely no excuse for not knowing what it is. And for it to say their record is horrific. And you know, there were some Russian soldiers I really liked. They're, they're not all monsters. They're good and bad people in every country. And I know that personality matters far more than nationality or even ideology. Um, but y you'd believe um, what most of the Russian public believes too, if you were incessantly um, fed uh, this a diet of nonsense and um, hatred on Russian TV. So in terms of hyper-nationalism, irredentism, militarism, chauvinism, that's sort of a three out of three for fascism there. Wars of aggression, yeah, um, well, against Georgia, against Ukraine. Yeah, could, I mean, he could have launched more wars of aggression, but he doesn't have victims he can easily defeat apart from that. Syria, all right, the recognised government invited him in, so that's not really a war of aggression, even though he had his military behave there appallingly gas civilians many times. So in terms of wars of aggression, maybe two out of three. I mean, I'm sure it'd be three of three if he could get away with it. What he's doing to Ukraine, he'd do to us in Ireland and Great Britain if he could. Um, so uh, the big lie, yes, that that has got to be three out of three projection, calling his victims aggressors. 
there's always NATO aggression when his aircraft buzzes them or um, when his, his airplanes violate NATO airspace. It, it's always lying about that, no matter how irrefragably proven. The downing of Malaysia Airlines, that flight, um, the uh, attempted murder in Salisbury, the murder of Litvinenko, the murder of Poli uh, Anna Politkovskaya, and on and on. So that uh, this huge military buildup on the borders of Ukraine was not a threat to anyone, he said, that he promised he was never going to invade Ukraine, lie after lie after lie, calling Zelensky a Nazi, saying there was a fascist junta. Um, so in terms of lying, it's got to be three out of three. Um, and obviously projection of his own vices onto his victims. Um, so victim blaming, that's part of it. Reneging on treaties, I mean, that is pretty, that's got to be three out of three as well, really. Remember the Bud Budapest Memorandum? honouring the independence and sovereignty of Ukraine, things like that. Um, breaking, breaking, in, breaking, in, breaching international law willy-nilly. Um, so his perjury and perfidy for that, he's got to be three out of three. Remember with him, a guarantee of non-aggression becomes a guarantee of aggression. So um, uh, aggressing his neighbours. Um, surrounding himself with sycophants, co-dependents, his co-evils, you know, who, who are feeding his ego, who are egging him on. That seems to be three out of three. Although they were a bit hesitant and they had to be goaded into falling into line, particularly um, the more cerebral ones like Sergei Lavrov. Lavrov has always been wicked, but he's not imbecilic. He knew this was going to be diplomatically disaster, this war, even if he didn't, didn't quite appreciate the scale of the military debacle. Or, you know, the, the, the sanctions pushback surprised me. Um, I didn't think that the EU were willing to sustain such financial loss, nor the United States. And they've reversed their earlier policy. I mean, just. And hours ago, they said both the United States and, and the European Union, they're going to cut off all Russian oil imports. It's a question of timing. The US immediately, the EU is going to phase it out over the next um, eight years. But I know that's not impressive. When the Ukraine has been killed every day, say, you know, we're dying, our children are being murdered, and you're not willing to pay a bit more for your gasoline? Go on. So I know Russia's going to have a very difficult time holding down Ukraine, even if they conquer the whole country, because it's the size of France. Or if you're American, it's, it's slightly smaller than Texas. So um, Putin's intolerance, yeah, that's, well, that's two out of three. His fixation with punishment. I mean, Russia's got a huge per capita prison population. You can go to prison for years and years for telling the truth, for being a so-called extremist eight years in prison. He even didn't do anything violent at all. That's jail, holding an opinion. So the whole political prisons, prisons of conscience by the thousand. Um, so, uh, yeah, torture, used on a fairly well, wide scale, fairly severe tortures. I'm not aware that anyone's actually been, been killed under torture. But even peaceful protesters, anti-war protesters, get beaten up. There was a sound recording at Radio Free Europe showed that this, this woman in her 50s being, being slapped about for several minutes by the police um, just for, like, attending an anti-war protest when she's anti-violence. If that's what they'll do to a middle-aged woman, what would they do to a young man? Um, Russia hasn't turned off the gas supply to Germany yet, which would hit Germany, but it would, it would hurt um, the Russian economy too, a lot. When the Russian economy shrunk about 10% in, in, in a fortnight, it's gonna, how much more is it going to shrink? Um, so soon they won't be paying salaries on time. What effect will that have on military morale? So the economy is going to be wrecked. It's going to be sent back to the 90s. Um, in terms of homophobia, well, that's two out of three. It's not actually, it's not actually a crime homosexuality, but they say gay propaganda is it or... Is, is a crime, is encouraging children to be gay or anything like that. Um, even teachers on Facebook have said that, they, you know, that she's a lesbian or something, but this teacher, she lost her job, even though she wasn't telling that to her pupils. Persecuting Jehovah's Witnesses, well, that's got to be three out of three. It's a crime to be a Jehovah's Witness. Can you believe that? Holding a certain religious belief is criminalised. One of the very same uh, people, um, the same groups as were persecuted by the Third Reich. So he's got more in common with the Third Reich than he likes to pretend. I mean, you know, wholesale genocide, no, innocent of that one. So don't believe everything you hear about him. Not all the accusations are true. Um, I don't think Galloway should be punished for saying that. I think he should be despised. I wouldn't give him a platform. I wouldn't legally prohibit him from speaking. And one of the few things about this um, uh, anti-Putin campaign that I am perturbed by is taking RT off air. Um, we, mustn't, we mustn't go his way. So um, he's co-opted the major religion, which, which fascist regimes always do. And for that one, well, I mean, it's two out of three because he's not actually made it a state religion. It's not in schools. No religion to mention in schools. Some people say you can't even mention Christmas in school. So this appeal to the mystical past, linking to himself to Stalin and the Tsars, you know, the military in a secular state paying for a huge cathedral to Stalin, who viciously persecuted the Orthodox Church, who murdered millions of its members. I mean, that's got to be three out of three. 
for rewriting history, being a falsifier of the annals, for denying atrocities, um, having his minions put about the claims that various people murdered by the Soviet secret police were in fact um, killed by Germans or whatever. On that scale, probably got to be three out of three. Um, now, youth movement, no. I mean, there was one out of three that was a Nazi, but not really fascist on that. Indoctrination and brainwashing, I mean, that's pretty high. Two out of three. It, it could be stepped up. It could be, um, uh, all right, on radio, on television, and the newspapers, there's quite a lot. But there's some newspapers who are not into that. They don't dispute it, but they simply don't disseminate this stuff. Um, but uh, anyway, almost all foreign uh, media outlets have either been blocked or have stopped operating. And they're in, in, increasingly trying to suborn Facebook, Twitter, any uh, YouTube, any of these things to take down content which they, they dub to be extremists, claim it was all about preventing paedophilia or the promotion of drug abuse or suicide. And it's true that they were preventing that, as any government would prevent, but there's a lot that they were not, it was nothing to do with that, was simply um, opposition, dialogue, discourse. Um, so um, anyway, uh, propaganda through media films and all the rest of it, and um, that's pretty high. That's certainly two out of three. The police in conformity, the FSB, that's the Internal Intelligence Agency, with officers in historical institutes and scientific institutes, as though there's ideology and chemistry or physics or a empirical science. This is nonsense. And I mean, that's back to the Soviet days. And what is their ideology? It's really ultranationalism, the very thing they accuse the Ukrainians of. Now, the Ukrainians don't claim an inch of, 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 of Russian soil. Again, this is a projection. It's Russia's aggressing Ukraine, not the other way around. Um, Anyway, so um, the false flag operations, obviously blaming the victims for gas attacks in Syria and things like that. Um, so there was having the way that a thought crime, simply holding an opinion is, is punishable by death in Russia. You don't believe me? There was a law they passed, I think it was October 2006, saying that the, the Russian security forces are authorized to kill any extremist in any part of the world. So simply holding a belief, not, not doing anything, maybe not even saying anything, if you're an extremist, you're killed, no trial. Um, so um, murdering people at home and abroad, although I suppose in Russia it's not murder because it is lawful. Um, and, and these journalists, and no, I can't prove to the criminal standard that Putin was behind it, but you'd have to be um, especially idiotic not to, not to recognize a pattern there. Journalists who tell the plain truth about crimes committed by his own government, they meet a very premature and a very violent death. And the killers are usually not caught. caught. Or in the case of, of some of them, um, what happens is they turn out to be people who are released from prison early and they tell this to the police when they're interrogated in return for carrying out this hit until they'll be led away with it. Um, uh, but they're not. So, um, you know, a, a deputy prime minister of Russia shot dead within the shadow of the Kremlin. Um, OK, that's Badis Nemtsov. And, you know, Putin's a security crat. He's legitimized his regime on the basis that there's such a big danger and security is so important, but I can guarantee excellent security. But he can't even keep a deputy prime minister of Russia alive who's right beside Putin's own palace. I mean, how did the, were the police not able to prevent this? Who would dare um, kill someone there if they weren't put up to it by the government? Who could possibly think they could get away with it? It hadn't been promised by the FSB. Yeah, we'll make sure you get away with this. So this is a not sort of Orwellian dystopia he's leading them into. Up until now, he was able to at least guarantee a decent standard of living for most of the population, but that's gone. 20% of Russians live below the official poverty line. What we would consider poverty is much higher. At least 7% of them have a middle class standard of living as Westerners would see it, which would be say every adult can afford a car, every child has his or her own bedroom, everybody has a laptop, everybody can afford to go abroad at least once a year, things like that. And those, those bourgeois people are mostly in Moscow and St. Petersburg, but they're gonna be hit too. Even the billionaires are losing some of their billions. So I'll tell you why it's so like 1984, is it's more like less like this. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. And truth is false. Uh, and that you know, when they invade Georgia, they call those troops peacekeepers. When they're illegally occupying Moldova, and this war they cause in Moldova, they call them peacekeepers, the, the aggressors. Um, anyway, uh, calling other fascists, uh, other fascists when he's generally, genuinely fascistic himself. So this is, this is Putinite topsy-turvydom. There's this cognitive dissonance there that um, he's spouting this absolute tripe, calling everybody fascist when behaving in, in a genuinely fascistic manner himself. Um, but it's all about faith. You must believe in something you know to be bogus. Double think, yet another Orwellian concept. So that's, and, uh, and it's fascism. I mean, I haven't quite counted the score, but it's pretty high. Um, I mean, as for fascism, what am I giving him? You know, something like an 80% score? What do you think? 
Toodaloo.